I'm so excited to be joined today by Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, composer, and icon Rufus Wainwright. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's so great to have you here, but it's also so great to have your shoes here. Can the camera <laughs> cut to the shoes? Oh Where did you get these? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I... Um... Uh, well, it's been quite a while. They're actually they're actually called Pride shoes. Oh, pri okay, perfect. So, it's pride. So, so that's in honor of uh, I think a pride a pride a pride past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, no. And I've, so I've been wearing them quite a bit for a couple of years. Okay. Um, and it's interesting because you know I think I do think that there was a time early on in 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 the in the our president's um, checkered past where uh, essentially. You know, to say not my president, you know, caused a bit of a stir, mm -hmm. even with his supporters, because yeah. um, they'd say things like, well, he, you know, he's everybody's president. Yeah. But I think even them at this point are resigned to Exhausted. the fact <laughs> that he's totally, you know, outcast, <laughs> you know, uh, most people, yeah. you know, in his country. Yes. So, so it's, uh, you know, they, they, they. So they're perfect now. Yeah, they're, they're just, they, they make sense. It it's began just, as it's radical. Like a fact. Yeah. And it began know? as radical, <laughs> now it's wearing, like, yeah. Converse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Pride, it is Pride Month, and something that yes. I'm so excited to talk to you about today is that you were one of the, you were the first uh, popular artist yes. to have a major record deal. Yes, there and, we go, we said it. And there she, she is here, this is yes. her. <laughs> first out. out. I mean, I was, yeah, I was, I, there were certainly other gay artists before me, yes. um, but, but, but I, but technically, I was the first sort of mainstream yes. uh, on a major label artist mm -hmm. to, to come out as gay and really survive. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, there was a couple. There was this guy Jabriath in the in the seventies who were I think they used his gay thing as a sort of marketing tool, kind of like David Bowie. Yeah. Um, and he ended up you know uh, drinking himself to death and. Uh, and, and becoming a lounge singer. Yeah. I mean, I've done a little better than that. It's bad, a bit. I <laughs> Not mean, that there's anything yes. wrong with lounge singing, but yeah, you've done a little yeah, higher. But yeah, so, and I so think, yeah. And I think it, it's not only that you were out, but you were doing covers of magazines. You yeah, were out yeah, magazines. Yeah, I was, I was on the cover of About Magazine in 98. And I think, I think you know, there was, there was a period where I would get a little bit um, feisty, shall mm -hmm. we say, when they said, like, oh, Adam Lambert was the first. Yeah. Or, uh, who you know? Certainly, congratulations on all the success. For sure, but uh, but but no, but I was. Yes, <laughs> and and I think what it was for me also is that I didn't necessarily make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I sang songs that were, you know, that were addressed to uh, to other men, and mm -hmm. and but then I had a whole slew of other material, and yeah. I and I didn't even try to be. I don't know. I was I was really more interested in the, in in the music mm -hmm. and in in the the quality of the albums yeah. and and you know and and working as an artist in mm -hmm. general, whether I was gay or straight or whatever. Yeah. So. And what's it been like to see these new artists that are uh, openly LGBTQ, and it yeah. is a big part of their career. So you're thinking of like yeah. Troye Sivan, yeah. Kim Petras, the young trans pop singer. Yeah, yeah. You you yeah. said that yours was just part of your music, but yeah. theirs is so central to their identity. Yeah, I mean, I I I I don't know. I mean, I. I'm really, really happy for Troy. I, I've, I've worked with him a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've written a song or two together, and um, and it's amazing, you know, that, that now it's it's um, you know it's 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 becoming part of the main, really part of the mainstream, and 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 so forth. I I do feel, you know, a little old-fashioned mm -hmm. in, in the sense that, that that I would love once again I would love to it to focus on the material I love you know a great song is a great song yeah. no matter where you're from or, or what you look like and and um, and 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 that's sort of where my allegiance lies I know when I started out years ago you know I was I was uh, fairly attractive <laughs> young man and and I and that didn't hurt yeah it didn't hurt and and uh, and and uh, and I was able to sort of you know, be a somewhat of a sex mm -hmm. symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my God! Did you tell your mom uh, earlier that? Did you on? Call her oh, my mom loved it. Believe me. Uh, anything, anything to get ahead. Yeah. And uh, ooh, that sounded weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it sounded great. My mom would understand my if I said mother, that. Yeah. Anyways, to get ahead. But uh, but anyways, but but I do feel, you know, sometimes. You know, with a lot, and but that's pop. So it's the 50th anniversary of Stonewall, and I'd love to hear what it means to you. Well, no, it's it's certainly um, an important milestone, uh, and you know, I, I, I've always been um, somewhat of the opinion that that it's that it's a double-edged sword mm -hmm. in the sense that that uh, that when uh, after after. Um, 
Stonewall, there was a, a shift that occurred where, where we became more visible and more, um, more, you know, equal or attempting to be mm -hmm. equal and, and, and so forth. And there's a really positive part of that. And especially myself as a married man, yeah. um, and, and, and a father, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, uh, I, I very much benefit from, from a lot of those, mm -hmm. um, rights. I do think, Though that there was something um, for me personally when I came out uh, in the in the mid eight in the late eighties really, um, and and AIDS was was uh, ravaging you know uh, the the gay community. Uh, I I don't know I felt it necessary to go back to the pre Stonewall kind of um, ethos mm -hmm. where gay men and, and I say that because I'm a gay man um, were really you know surviving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite desperately and really needed to lean on the arts and, mm -hmm. and literature and theater and, uh, and intelligence yeah. to, uh, to, you know, become, to, to really make it. And, and, uh, and though I don't think everybody can become Oscar Wilde, yeah. certainly, exactly. um, I tried to, uh, uh, become something of that sort, you know, mm -hmm. of this, you know, warrior. Mm -hmm. And, and I do feel so, so sometimes like trying to get too, um, uh, assimilated, mm -hmm. I guess, into the culture, we lose a bit of that fighting spirit. So as long as we, you know, which, which is ironic because I mean, I mean, the Stonewalls, uh, Stonewall was a riot. Yeah. So, so, so as long as we keep the riot yeah. going. And it's not just a corporate <laughs> and it's not, And it's not just about, you know, I don't know, just bland, blandifying our, our existence. Mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that's, that's important. Yeah. Me. So you mentioned pre Stonewall, and I know someone that's important to you is Judy Garland. Yes. It's also her yes. birthday this month, and yes. she is part of the Stonewall yes. history no, herself. Totally, totally. Why are you so gravitated to her as an artist? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I come from an interesting generation where uh, I'm 45, and it's in this, there's this interesting little pocket, especially for gay men, mm -hmm. where, you know, we didn't have VCRs yet. Like I remember VCRs happening, mm -hmm. so you could rent movies. But that was like later in my teenage years, and then and then they started having movies on television. Mm -hmm. um, and The Wizard of Oz was a real event every Easter. They mm. would play. It would be on television, and everybody would watch it. So so and it just hit me right at that age. Mm. Um, and and uh, and formative year, years. And I sort of yeah. So I. So, so that t took hold, and I was obsessed with that. And then later on, when I moved to Hollywood to make my first albums, mm -hmm. um, I was very, very seduced by the by just legends of old Hollywood, yeah. which she's certainly a big part of. And 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 I certainly related more to the you know latter Judy, <laughs> <laughs> the more decadent, yes. um, troubled, uh, dark yes. Judy, and uh, living in London Judy. Yeah, yeah. London Judy, mm -hmm. and uh, and. And was somewhat haunted by her, actually. Um, I would like, there are these funny stories where I'd go into Tower Records, um, <laughs> and, uh, and to buy the latest, you know, Radiohead record, and I would walk out with like three Judy Garland albums, you know, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, so, so then I subsequently did the, the Judy Garland show, yes. uh, the, the, her, her 1961 concert at Carnegie Hall, and, and that was very much a kind of exorcism. Mm -hmm. Because I'd gotten a little sick of her, frankly. It really? was, uh, I mean, I always love her, but it was this, fa it's kind of dark fascination. Mm -hmm. So I did that and it did, it did subside a little mm. bit. So, uh, speaking of Judy, you, uh, not speaking of Judy, but you're on a tour currently. <laughs> I did my 20th anniversary, uh, poses tour, mm -hmm. all these poses, which was a great success. Yes. Um, and now I have to pay for it because <laughs> we brought out a big band and we had production and stuff. Yeah. So now I have to, I have this tour called Oh Solo Rufus. Mm -hmm. Or Osola Wainwright, is it Osola Wainwright? Osola Wainwright. I love there that we you go. Thank my you. notes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Osola Wainwright. And uh, yeah, it's just me going around uh, singing my songs alone <laughs> uh, all over the world and um, to make money in order to pay for, you know, writing operas and, yeah. you know, uh, being, you know, True to my art. Well, Rufus, thank you so much for being here thank today. You. It was really lovely thank to you. meet you, and I'm so excited for this new album and everything else you have going on. Great, thank so, you. So, and if you'd like to go see Rufus's new show called Oh Solo Wainwright, which is a tour yeah. that yes. you're on, yes. if you don't remember, <laughs> go to rufuswainwright.com. 